Hello, my name is Michael Zalapsky, and if that sounds vaguely familiar to you, well, you may have seen me on the Creative Cow forums, on the Adobe forums, running the After Effects subreddit, owning the Motion Design Artist Slack channel, participating in more Slack channels, or participating in way too many Discord servers. If you want to see more from me after this, you can find me posting After Effects and Cinema 4D tips and commentary on my Twitter, and very rarely posting things on Instagram. I also have a website. My last 12 years, my full-time job has been doing 3D animation, motion graphics, and shooting and editing video for a special unit uh, that's, let's just say, part of the US government. And needless to say, that work is under heavy NDAs. So while I can't show any of the work I've done for real, here's a quick doodle reel of side projects and stuff I did on a couple of weekends just for fun. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you a future. <laughs> That old secretive job is now behind me, and I recently got hired by Maxon as part of the Red Giant team. I'm the community manager, so expect to see me around events like Camp MoGraph and NAB, as well as online at, on all the Red Giant socials. And I'm glad to be working for Red Giant now too, because we have a lot of cool stuff we're working on. I'll be showing a kind of sneaky peek at some of that today as I break down a couple of recent projects for you. Uh, first, a quick and simple promo for VFX and Chill. a show where action movie dad and the extremely famous Seth Worley show you a kind of behind the scenes peek at visual effects that no one ever shows you in tutorials, which is the hard part at the beginning where you're trying to figure out what is gonna work for this shot that just got handed to you. Well, I made this quick promo for it and people ask for tutorials, so you know, let's begin. Now, here we are in After Effects and I'd like to say that this shot, like most good visual effects shot, is mostly cheating. I started off by going to Cinema 4D, hopped into the asset browser here, typed in mug, because I wanted a mug, grabbed the one I liked the shape of, popped it into the scene, and uh, saved it out. Then, back in After Effects, I imported that mug into Trap Code Mirror. Most people know Mirror for this sort of fractally flowy terrains and clothy looking stuff, but under the geometry section, you can choose a model and there's a bunch to come preset for you. You can import your own Cinema 4D files or OBJs, all is good. Put it in here and then you'll notice it doesn't look brown and circly like it did in Cinema 4D. That's because I have a mug texture comp I'm using here to take that, cover it up with just a shape layer here with some fractal noise on it to give it that grungy look through the logos on there and a little hey come watch Fridays at 10 then I just animated it flying away got some point lights around here flickering with an expression to give it a bit of firelight on the mug as you'll see here then uh, most of it is being done by some really good stock footage got a slow-mo shot of a fireman running through a burning house with some really cool reflections from the water that I guess they're using to fight the fire with I think the fire is winning then uh, just a regular old fire element. And then I threw it all in Super Comp. Super Comp is the secret sauce that makes it work. Inside Super Comp, you see I have my three layers, my fire, my mug, and my other fire. And the background layer, I've got optical glow on it. Gives it that little shiny punch before, after. Really helps brighten things up. And you'll notice 
that color bleed that's happening here is also happening on the mug, even though the mug is above it in the layer stack. That's because in SuperComp, all of the layers are aware of and react to each other with no pre-comping, no weird layer stacks of all kinds of stuff. It just all works. On the mug, I've got an edge blend, very subtle, light wrap, very subtle to help bring in some of this orange around on the edges, and haze, again, very subtle, because in visual effects, subtlety is key, even when you have a building full of fire. On the foreground fire here, I've got some color correction, a heat blur to, let's see if I can show it off at all. Let me turn off the glow here, see if it really shows off the heat blur, because I have to have optical glow, because I put that on everything, like Frank's hot sauce. Heat blur off, heat blur on. You'll see how it really warps the background behind it. I put this one a little less subtly because I'm a weirdo. All right, now that that quick one is over with, here's a more involved project for a new energy drink that comes not in a can, but in a bottle. Earth shattering, I know. Let's watch. All right, let's dive into After Effects. Now, I wanna talk about a couple of shots here for you. Uh, this one here, full of our fake energy drink brands. We've got Bad Swill, Monstrously Icky, and others getting blown away by this electricity with the heavy implication that cans are bad because they rust and are bad for the environment and plastic is so much better. And I want to talk about this shot here with our Lord of the Rings quote, because there's some interesting tricks to make that shot work. And I want to talk in general about how I got the lightning beams to work and the reactive lighting uh, on the text and th really throughout the whole thing. We'll, we'll start here in this shot, telling the energy drinks to can it. Um, this is actually fairly interestingly built. I, I used Element 3D for the cans and the reflective floor. And so you see I've got the foreground cans here. I've got my sparkle beam and my main beam of lightning in there together. I've got the depth map here from Element, which is helping me cut things out. And then of course, we've got super comp over top of everything to make it all tie together. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is this can it here. Uh, you'll see it says can it, and then it goes like that. The original words here are using universe luster to give it that luster. Some animated roughen edges and matte choker. And that just chokes this layer away. If I solo the layer, you can see that it just chokes away. And then below it, I have a rest layer hiding, which is just using the same text. Roughen edges, roughen edges with the rusty edge type, fractal noise over top of it to give it that shade, tint to give it the rusty color, and a bevel alpha to give it that sharp edge. Couple that with rough and edges and it really gives a nice kind of grit and grain there. So you see some fairly simple techniques to get a fairly effective result. Nice shiny metal being worn away to rust. Back in our main comp here, let's start with our main beam. The base of it is an effect called Particular, one of Trapcode's most famous. Uh, it uses a primary system that is blowing along. Uh, it doesn't have any velocity you'll note. It's blowing along using the environment wind. This is very different from the drift kind of wind that is still present in the fast physics section here. This is much more organic and physically accurate and can use air turbulence to affect the particles and whatever. Anyway, it's just all overall better. They have a second system that is emitting off of those particles with some streaklets. I mean, it's really ugly, <laughs> just straight out of uh, the box, but I knew it didn't need to look shiny because I was about to throw a bunch of other effects on it. Uh, a bit of turbulent displace just to give it a little bit of uh, better shape to it. Uh, some tint to give it some color, 
and then a new tool working on called Electrify that uses the contours of underlying footage to really give it uh, some electrical effects. I'll show this off a little better later. And then some vector blur. Really gives that organic -y look. And then once you throw some super comp on top of it, well, by gum, it looks pretty powerful and energetic and electrifying. On top of that, we've got this layer of sparkles, also using particular. This, a very ugly version of particular. This one's moving along with regular velocity and uses the fast physics turbulence fields to push the particles around into the sort of unique shape where they bubble in size and, sh and uh, position. Then over top of it, some electrify to really give it that sparkly look and a bit of a linear wipe to help the front end be exactly the way I wanted it to be when it comped in top over everything else. I'd like to talk about super comp again because it is my favorite thing. You'll see we've got a few more layers in it this time. We've got the background, some noise, the gradient, the text, which uses some edge blend, haze, and diffusion just to really make it feel more natural and part of the scene. Uh, our main beam has layer glow, which is the same thing as optical glow, except that it stays behind the other layers, and then optical glow, which wraps around the layers. So if we turn off, here, let's turn off our sparkle layer, and we just look at the main layer. If we turn off the optical glow, you'll see it's got that haze, but it doesn't wrap around these other things. So it's better than throwing a post bloom on in your 3D render, because then it would just blow across everything like optical glow does, but use them both together, the first version to get that nice hazy glow on the layer itself, then optical glow to really make it pop and make it wrap around the other layers. And then we've got our sparkle beams there uh, with some heat blur and optical glow. And then some haze and optical glow again on the front cans here. Then of course our canet in the front here has some light wrap to help the rest of the scene kind of fade in around it. A little bit of haze and some diffusion. Let me just show you, without the post effects on it, it looks like that. That's straight out of Element and After Effects own layers. Super Comp. We got a bit of uh, Trap Code Lux taking some of the spotlights in the scene and putting a volumetric almost lighting around it. And then a flare using Null Light Factory, just to add a bit of a kiss up there off one of the lights, and then some color correction with Magic Bullet Looks, and a tiny bit of blurring and then resharpening just to make it feel more filmed, uh, less perfect. In Magic Bullet Looks, I've got a bit of overall diffusion, some chromatic aberration, lens vignette, edge softness, anamorphic flare is the really thing, only thing here that's really that stylized, this in the LUT. The flare really helps pop off those shiny parts, and then the LUT gives it uh, a nice overall color. These two are the only things that are stylized. The rest are to really make it feel more organic and natural in shot. And of course, Renoiser to give it a bit of grain. Now, I really want to talk about this shot here a lot. Uh, I was obviously influenced by music videos from, well, I don't know, the early aughts early 2000s, whatever you want to call them, where their pop stars were standing in front of these giant industrial fans for no good reason that had big bold lights behind them for no good reason. And I thought, hey, how quickly and cheaply can I make this fan effect happen nowadays? And it turns out, uh, pretty quick and cheap. So the fan isn't built in any sort of fancy 3D app. If I turn off Super Comp, you'll see that it really starts looking like a 2D After Effects layer because that's uh, pretty much what it is. Here's the fan. It's got the opening, which is this bl black layer with a circle effect. It's got a white circle. It's got the fan blades, which are just a shape layer, and the grate, which is just a uh, solid layer with a grid effect. And they're just slightly offset in 3D space. And After Effects. They're lovely After Effects 2.5D layers. And then Super Comp makes it all go kapow. I used my favorite optical glow on the fan here, and I used the radiate option, which makes optical glow behave a little more like trap code shine, but with all of the physically 
accurate lighting and glow effects that optical glow has and I also slightly changed the red size and the blue size to give it that little pop of color and this hero shot uh, to make this lightning go in, I used the exact same particles from the opening shot. I just used Bezier warp on them uh, to make them go warping inside the bottle the way I wanted them to go. And they're actually not inside the bottle, they're behind it, but shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, what I really want to talk about is the electrify on the text here. So if I solo just the electrify part of it, you'll see that it's got these electrical things running across the actual contours of the letters and we get that by if I turn off all these things I have the regular text bevel the alpha blur it a bit because the bevel alpha is a bit too sharp do some colorama to give it that kind of contour and then the electrify over top turn off colorama you'll see it's a little simpler so there's less for the lighting to grab onto but it moves across it in a really quite interesting way anyway huge fan of how this works you can drive it if you don't have good contours in the image like if for example if we didn't have a bevel alpha on there we could use the fractal, regular fractal noise and just have it drive that way which still looks good, but I really like the how natural and organic it looks when it's following the image contours. Uh, now, I was toying around with putting a gradient ramp on here and forcing the lightning to move in a certain direction. So here you see it goes up because that gradient ramp is going up. Thanks for hanging out with me these couple of minutes. I hope you learned something useful. Catch me on my socials or at MoGraph events. I love to talk nerdy about all this stuff.